Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Boston-based jazz saxophonist Carlos Averhoff Jr. We spoke at length about his latest 2018 CD called IQ Cuba. And the name is referencing the economic crisis in Cuba in the 1990s. He was born in Havana, Cuba, and his first encounter with the music was through his mother's womb by the hands of his father, legendary saxophonist and member of Chucho Valdez, Ira Carne, Carlos Averhoff Sr. He would go on to learn from the likes of luminaries like Jerry Berganzi, George Garzone, Terry Lynn Carrington, and so many others. And that has led to collaborations with Lewis Hayes, Jimmy Cobb, Bob Moses, and a lot of other musicians. So please get to know him and dig this interview, my friends. Carlos, thank you for taking a minute out from the Aunt Jazz. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, for having me. You bet. So let's talk about your latest 2018 CD, iCuba. Uh, it's a name inspired uh, by the economic crisis in Cuba in the 1990s. Talk to me about this and why this fueled this album. I should say that the name of the album is inspired about the Cuban people. You know, musically, I I go I I bring tribute uh, or I do tribute to the timba, which also was born in the 1990s. So the economic crisis, you know, is, is, it, we can't say that it's not an inspiration. It's as I, as, I, as I said before, it's most uh, I inspire about the Cuban people how we, you know, normally deal with that, you know. So that's that's it, you know. For example, uh, during the 1990s, we, we had this economic crisis happening. The Soviet Union falls apart, um, so. We, you know, I was a kid, of course, but the Cuban people are, um, we struggled a lot. I remember um, a lot of crises. It was almost no food, no no gas, you know, no energy, uh, electricity in, the, in homes for for eight hours sometimes. Um, you know, the Cuban people had to react to that uh, new uh, situation. Um, they need to reinvent so uh, to deal with that and also with whatever day by day situation will be happening, you know. So it's still uh, happening now. Uh, it's unbelievable, but you know it's a little bit less. But but yeah, you know, it's it's uh, we we need to use a lot the IQ, you know, our our imagination to make the things happening. For example, if you you just check. The history of Cuba in 1994 was just the crisis happening. A lot of Cubans start to get out, you know, like they uh, build their own craft, their, their own, they build uh, like their own ship, like rustic ship, like boats, like like boats, and they 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 went to the sea because they wanted to escape. I witnessed all that, and they did. They built those boats. From nothing, you know. Uh, I it's a picture, a very more famous picture in the internet that you can that someone built a boat from a very old uh, Chevrolet, you know, like American car. He convert that Chevrolet in a boat, in a boat, you know. He made it to Miami. So it's an interesting history happening, but in a very, very dark, you know, a period from Cuban people. But some, the only not, the only thing that uh, surprisingly, it, it, uh, it happened was also the the, the timba. Timba was born. Uh, timba is, is you see, you compare with salsa, for example, of back in the eighties, the salsa in the nineties. Timba has a, a more aggressive style. Aggressive, uh, we can say it, more energetic, more aggressive. Uh, uh, it's a, a style of music, you know. The tumbao, the piano tumbao, for example, the 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 bass feel, and I know that uh, timba also was a result of this period, you know, which people were, you know, uh, were upset, you know, were in stress constantly. You check the lyrics of those uh, songs during the nineties, timba sounds. Some you you will realize that there was something happening, you know. They, they the way the lyrics were written, you know, 
very popular, very, you know, people's the lyric sounds aggressive, you know, as well, you know. So I can mention artists like Medico de Alfa, for example, which I don't know what, what he's doing now. Or Pablo F G, right? F A H F G. Those were, you know, uh, some of the artists uh, during those years. IQ is mostly inspired about the Cuban people uh, and the the way they uh, make the things happen. You know, yeah. and survive during that crisis. So we are talking about two different things here. You know, musically, the timba. Which, because I grew up, though, you know, I was 10, 10 years old when all that happened. You know, I was younger, and I was growing up listening to timba in my neighborhood, you know. And then I had the privilege and the honor to play with some, with a couple of professional timba bands, you know, when I was uh, 20. So, so it's, it's mostly that, you know. Talk to me about... Let's talk about some happier things about growing up in Cuba. Your dad was a famous uh, uh, jazz player as well. Talk to me about, you know, kind of growing up around that. My, my dad was a well-known, you know, jazz, uh, no, not only jazz player, but saxophone, let's say more saxophone player and pedagogy. But, you know, he was in a music instructor, like saxophone private teacher. Very, he, he, he was very famous for that. And um, also in the Latin jazz world, he was very famous. Um, and the fact he played in Irakere with Chucho Valdez was uh, super, uh, uh, was very good for him. You know, that's, that's just for, for us, is very important. Being part of the history, and Chucho Valdez is part of the history, you know, Irakere too. So my father got lucky. He, he, he made his, his own career, but also most of his career was in, in Chucho, similar, you know, with Pakistan, for example, they were there at Trudeau Sandoval as well. So my father was, was there at home, and I always was listening to him when I was growing up. You know, he, it's unbelievable, he wasn't too much in Cuba. He was traveling all the time because he like it, traveled a lot. So... Uh, but when he was at home, I always listened to him, you know, uh, studying and, and teaching around, you know. Uh, uh, Sometimes I went to the Irakeres rehearsal, so I, I, I was a little kid playing around and jumping around, but I was listening to all that uh, wonderful energy happening. Yes, uh, mostly that. Um, having my dad around was was. Very important because I I kept that energy with me. You know, I I took that energy uh, of music, uh, being disciplined. Every time I could, I practiced with him. I didn't practice with him too much. He, I think he was smart enough uh, not to be very involved with my practicing or helping me too much. So that way, my teacher, my pr- first private teacher, was taking care of me more. Because he was a, a my private teacher was a hardcore guy. Like uh, I own him a lot, and um, and he decided to do, you know to do wise step in order for me to help me to to change my my saxophone skills. You know, you've obviously been around not only jazz but music your whole life. But I want to ask you more specifically: Why do you love jazz? I love jazz because the first thing I would say that. That's the principal music I was having. I was listening in my home, you know. So my dad always have uh, jazz. He was listening to fusion, to different eras, you know, on jazz. And it's so I, I got, I was identified with with that music. You know, I remember the first time that I really uh, liked uh, it was a Breaker Brothers uh, CD. I can't remember what was was really. I think it was 1992 when they returned. Um, that that CD catched me a lot. I was like, wow. So, um, as a matter of fact, at my beginnings, I was really attached to the breaker sound. So, it's, it's a normal thing in Cuba that people from my age, they have a lot of breaker influence. And, um, and, then, and then from there, I start to study. I start to, to check, you know, different... Uh, 
uh, characteristics inside the, such the jazz uh, until I, you know, realized that that's what I want. You know, jazz is freedom, is interaction, uh, is, is a style of music that you can stress whatever you want. You can also put a, a piece of your character, you know, who you are as a composer, as a player. So for me, jazz is one of the complete genres for a performer, you know, uh, in the performance uh, uh, type of view, you know. My beginning was that. I was super impressed with the Breaker Brothers, for example. And then, you know, I was coming back, you know, I, I started checking the the real fathers, you know, like Coleman Hawkins, Charlie Parker. Uh, but that was older, when I was a little bit older, like, but I, I really start checking more breaker, um, and yes, that's, that, I think it catch me, you know, I, I got impressed about that groovy fusion sound, which I didn't know, you know, it was fun for me. From there, it starts to grow up a sense of respect, you know, and discipline toward this, understanding what it is, and why I'm doing this, who I am, you know, what, to be honest, I don't consider myself a jazz player. I am a musician, composer, performer who practice jazz. You know, being a jazz player for me is is very deep. You know, it's it's very deep these days. So I consider myself, to be honest, like an artist who practice jazz. And my music, I would like to share it with the jazz influence. So let me get to know you a little bit more, and I want to ask you this. Everyone has their idea of who they think you are, your family, your friends, and your fans, but you know mm -hmm. yourself best. Who do you think you are? I think I am an artist uh, who is uh, trying to express, uh, to bring something uh, to the jazz history or the Latin jazz history or the Cuban jazz history. You know, I, I, I am trying to, to bring something new you know, that's what I'm working. I, I am, I consider an artist, uh, also a learner. I like to learn a lot. I like to, you know, music is like, I don't know, like the universe, you know, it's so open. Everything you can, you can learn from everything and put it in your work. So basically to respond to your question, I, I, I feel myself like, like pioneer, you know, and I'm trying to put Different type. I would try. I would be trying to to bring to the society uh, a different point of view of my music in this moment or in the moment. For example, Idacy is a, uh, my first album in 2015. It's a, a complete different point of view of my music. You know, this one IQ uh, is. Uh, I just want to work uh, and bring a message. You know. Uh, my next album, for example, will be uh, Honoring My Father. You know, we, we start uh, an album together. He couldn't, he died, and uh, he couldn't finish, but I will finish that album. So the message of that album will be, you know, bringing tribute, paying tribute to my father. And of course, the music will be different because I have to adapt the music concept of that album for my father, which was more easy, let's say more a little bit more old school, Latin jazz. That's, you know, it's, it's, it's what I, I see myself, like doing something new, doing something with a mission, with the, the history behind, you know. With, so that's what I think I am, like an artist trying to make different kind of, trying to bring or well, to build, elaborate different kind of music related with jazz and Latin jazz with the history. Beautiful. Yeah, I agree. And I think you're doing that. Carlos, thank you for joining me on Jazz. Thank you for talking about your album and your life and music. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you to your time. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Cuba, Boston, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Carlos for his time and his music. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. <laughs>